Hey there. So this um, is a shout out to my friend Nikki, who was chatting to me during today's marvelous Monday meditation. And she was asking me about weeds in her garden. I've been talking to the group about how it's a good idea to leave some weeds in the garden and why this might be the case. And I was just saying to them over the last few weeks how important it is to leave some weeds for the pollinators and also to create a space uh, and an energy for the fairies, for the elementals, for the nature spirits to come into the garden, how they like these areas of wild, of wild areas. And Nikki's been gardening over the weekend and she's got a patch of weeds that's coming up. And she said to me, but the weeds look like they're overwhelming each other. And how do I know which are good weeds and which are bad weeds? Um, and she asked me, how does she know how much of her garden to leave to the weeds? And I was saying, well, the thinking is to leave about 20% of your garden for the weeds full of pollinators. There is a stories or a series of stories which come from the Outer Hebrides in Scotland. Traditionally, people would always leave part of the fields or part of the gardens. 20% of it was left for the fairy folk, for the wee folk, um, and for nature spirits and for elementals. And of course, the science behind this is it attracts the pollinators into the gardens. Um, and I work a lot with flower essences and with... Yes! <laughs> Hey, fever. Um. Yes. With the energy of, of the plants. So I do leave portions of my garden um, over for the wild plants uh, to see what comes along, to see the energy that comes along. Um, and it's really important because what happens within my garden is that there is a balance between the cultivated areas and the wild spaces, the nature spirits, and the elemental spirits. So back to Nikki's question, how much are the gardens leave for the weeds and for the fairy folk? 20%, try and leave about 20% of your garden, even if it's a corner or a patch of the garden that you don't use very often. But at the same time, keep an eye on it, monitor it. Um, if you were wanting to deepen your connection with nature spirits, with elementals, with awareness of fairy uh, or that wild energy, whatever you want to call it, monitor it, spend time with it on a regular basis and pay attention to the weeds that are developing there. Um, if you start noticing, I'm watching out the window because I've got various bugs and birds and bees um, visiting my garden. Uh, if you notice that some of the weeds are getting overwhelming or the rest, take their heads off. Okay, take the flowers off. Um, when they're finished growing at the end of the season, a very useful practice is to take the heads once they're finished flowering, but before the seeds start dropping in the soil, to take those heads out. Okay, um, you might want to put them in a different area of the garden. It might be a pretty weed uh, and you might want to grow it somewhere else. Uh, or it might be a weed that you don't want in the garden. Okay, so get rid of it. Um, and only have a small patch of it in that weed patch. Um, and Nikki was asking, but how do you know how much to take and whether you're doing the right thing? So when you spend time with those wild areas of your garden, just take time just to tune in, just to feel into the energy of it. And you will get a sense of how much to take, how much is too much, uh, whether some of the weeds are overwhelming, uh, the rest. Now, your Aboriginal people also talk about how the plants that are needed for the healing and the growth of any individual will appear at the time when they are needed. Okay. And that is emotional and physical. So if we're thinking in terms of flower essences and you have weeds appearing in the garden that haven't been there before, take a look at the flower essence properties of those so-called weeds. Um, Nikki's got a lot of clover uh, appearing in the garden and when we looked up the flower essence of clover it is so pertinent to where she is right now um, and to what's what's going on her 
and her life. And one of the aspects is developing intuition and clarity with Clover. So quite often the plants that are needed for your well-being will appear in your garden. It's quite magical. When I first moved onto this property, there was a patch up the back that um, had been burnt a lot. And it, the soil was oh, really poor nutrient quality, really bad, really poor soil. Um, burns, chemical burns. And uh, Rose Bay Willow Herb appeared. It migrated across the landscape and landed in my garden. Rose Bay Willow Herb is windblown. And when I looked at the properties of it, it was all about uh, finding courage, feminine empowerment, feminine leadership, uh, going through a period of fire and cleansing and coming out the other side into uh, standing tall. Um, and this is exactly what was going on in my life at the time. Um, Rose Bay Willow Herb, the physical properties of it are also that areas that have been damaged by fire or pollution, Rose Bay Willow Herb will often grow on. Uh, and puts nutrients back into the soil when it falls at the end of the season. The leaves create a mulch, which start putting nutrients back into the soil. And then a few seasons later, your next succession of plants appear uh, because they wouldn't have been able to grow on that very, very poor soil quality. But as the soil quality improved with Rose Bay Willow Herb dropping its leaves, the next layer of plants was able to appear and to start growing. And that was nettles. Um, in my case, it was nettles and ground elder and there's yarrow there now as well. So one of the interesting things is, is that Rose Bay Willow Herb is also, an, it's an edible weed. So as well as using the, the energetic properties of it within my healing journey, I was also using it in spring as a tonic and a cleanser um, and as a food, as a spinach. Uh, my nettles, I, I had this lovely gentleman come and help me in the garden for a few seasons. And he, he was very proud. I've cleared out that patch of nettles. And I'm like, can you put them back, please? <laughs> because I eat them. Um, it's a wild spinach for me it, in the early months of the year. Uh, you would never start carry on eating nettles once they go to flower because they get nitrates in their leaves. And those nitrates can be very harmful in the body. So the early nettles in the spring, my child and myself, we love to eat them because they're, they're really, oh, they're really tasty. We, you know, we steam them with a bit of butter and a bit of salt and pepper. Brilliant. My ground elder is the same. And both of them are very cleansing, very good for the blood, blood very fortifying. But then the energy properties of them are also really good. Uh, to do with resilience and strength and um, clarity and peace through times of fire, through times of hardship, um, which at the time when they first appeared was very interesting because it was very relevant. Now yarrow is starting to appear. So my next step will be to go look at the essences, the properties of the flower essence of yarrow and to look at the medicinal qualities of them. So when you have weeds growing in your garden, not only are they, an are they an indication that the soil is going through a progression of healing and succession with the different plants that appear, but it's an also an indicator of your own healing and your own growth. So what I encourage you to do is to look at what are the herbal properties, the medicinal qualities of these wild plants that have appeared in your garden. What are the energy properties, the flower essence properties of these plants that have appeared in your garden? And how does that relate to the journey and the growth that you are experiencing within this moment in time? Uh, and I absolutely, absolutely encourage you, spend time in your wild areas in the garden. We need our wild areas for, for our inner well-being, for the sense of that it's okay to not be completely tamed, um, that we're okay with change and a bit of chaos in our lives and a bit of growth, um, that there is an aspect of ourselves which is always deeply, deeply connected and rooted in the world around us, and that when we acknowledge this and work with this and sit with this, we further call that energy into our lives to support our healing and our growth. And that when we need it, the plants that 
are beneficial for our healing and our growth, our physical and our emotional well-being will appear in the gardens around us at the time when we need the most, in the same way that people and situations and synchronicities will appear um, in order to support us and to support our healing. And connecting with the wild energies of our gardens helps to remind us of this. So not only is it a good idea to leave 20% of your garden for wild areas, for the fairies and the elementals and the nature spirits, but it's also good to connect with the energy of those areas, to connect with the wild energy uh, and to look at the healing effect of that within our bodies. Um, Nikki, I hope it's answered your question in a bit more detail. We didn't record it the first time around, but here's a bit more. Um, okay. Uh, one of the things to be aware of with succession in gardens um, and wild areas is you quite often have your pioneer plants that come along first. So in my garden, it was the rose bay willow herb. Uh, another one, another pioneer plant is silver birch. Um, and silver birch comes along on areas of ground, it's a tree, uh, that have been disrupted by building or um, fires again, or where there's a poor nutrient level in the soil. And silver birch migrates in on the wind and the seeds fall into the, the cracks on the ground and puts down roots and send out leaves. And over a few seasons, 15 years or so, what happens is all the fallen leaves from the silver birch create a better nutrient quality in the soil. And then perhaps an animal's visiting and, or a bird flies overhead and drops out a rowan seed uh, in its poop. And then the rowan starts to appear and that attracts more birds, which attracts more fertility and, and more nutrients to the soil because the rowan has those really bright, vibrant red berries that the birds love and all migrating and one of those might uh, poop out a cherry seed and the cherry then starts to grow and that attracts more life and more nutrients to the soil and eventually a squirrel comes along to eat the cherries perhaps and stashes a cache of of oaks or a jay comes along and hides an oak and then the oak starts to appear so over a period of about 40 50 years that area of wasteland that was barren soil has been infiltrated by a series of weeds, a series of trees that have created fertility within the soil and healed the soil. Um, and it's always useful to look at the succession of plants within your own garden and what they say about your healing and your journey. Uh, because there is no such thing as weeds. Those weeds are always working to balance the soil um, to create more fertility, to create more growth, to create more opportunity for growth. And when we come into connection with working with that and with working with awareness of that and the energy of the land, we start to move within that flow of energy. And that can be a very, very powerful place for healing and for well-being. Thank you. I hope your day is marvellous. Uh, I'm off out to meditate in the garden. See you soon.